in this module I'll be talking about uh, anesthesia and sedation during bronchoscopy. Now traditionally we've been using anticholinergics for procedures like uh, bronchoscopy or a uh, thoracosynthesis. Now the tradition of anticholinergics has been to reduce airway secretions, to prevent vasovagal phenomena, to prevent reflex bronchoconstriction and to prevent bradycardia and that's why atropine has been routinely used by most of us in practice. However, the use of atropine comes with side effects. The side effects are tachycardia, it's pro-arrhythmogenic, it can cause blurred vision, it can precipitate glaucoma and cause dryness of the mouth. The tradition of giving uh, anticholinergics such as atropine or glycopyrrolate has been challenged and there have been two randomized controlled trials which have actually uh, been done. They be, uh, the first one was by Williams in chest 1998. 100 consecutive patients, it was a double blind, randomized, placebo controlled trial. In this, half the patient received uh, anticholinergic, the other half did not receive uh, anticholinergics. And there were no significant differences in bronchodilatation, in secretions, in use of saline, in tracheobronchial bleeding, desaturation or arrhythmias. Later on, another trial was done at the Mayo Clinic and they looked at the role of atropine, glycopyrrolate or placebo in a randomized fashion. The primary endpoints were control of respiratory tract secretions and secondary endpoints were cough suppression, complications and overall patient comfort. And even this trial has shown that there is no benefit of anticholinergic pre-medication. And therefore, it becomes now a class A recommendation that anticholinergics are not required routinely before flexible bronchoscopy. Now, lignocaine. Lignocaine is routinely used uh, in practice uh, for to give local anesthesia. It's a common practice to give local anesthesia nebulizations and use spray as you go technique uh, using 1%, 2% or 4% lignocaine. <music>